Hello, welcome to my home workshop. So uh, I'll give you a quick tour, of, uh, but first I want to talk about this custom panel I built. Um, so this lets me test things and uh, switch audio around really easily. So I've got here uh, inputs the return. So whatever I'm testing, the device under test or DUT. Uh, outputs from it come in back in here, either XLR or quarter inch. Outputs here from my sound source go out to the device under test. So um, that's chosen by these switches. So I've got uh, audio from an iPad, or excuse me, iPod. So it's an uh, iPod Touch. Uh, got an old school oscillator. So that's um, right here. It's a Loftec oscillator. Uh, just lets me send out sine waves. Uh, it also has a meter um, that tells me frequency or level. Um, right now it's telling me what the oscillator is sending out. If I plug in um, this connector to here, then I'll be t seeing the frequency and level from whatever is coming in the left channel back of this device. Um, uh, so uh, iPod, oscillator, an external connection, MS-20, which is the Minisonic tester that we use in lab. I have one of those at home as well. Uh, and then an extra spot for nothing right now, and then I can also mute what's sent to it from I'm testing uh, for noise and things. Here's an output pad. So like we talked about in class, I want to send out reasonable line level from my testing device, then drop it down, um, and full, send full signal all the way down to minus 50 dB of pad uh, out the left output. The right output is always at the hottest, at the normal level, and this is the only padded. Um, so that's my test mic. We're, the one we're working on today is a mic preamp, so I'm down at minus 50. So sending out plus four, dropping it down 50 dB. Um, I've got a volume control for my speakers. I've got a pair of Fostex empowered speakers here that work really well for what I do. They sound pretty good. They're small out of the way. Uh, I've got a pair of VU meters that works really well for me seeing uh, good levels in a really reasonable way, but getting lots of detail from it. Right now, I'm uh, the meters are showing what's coming from the device under test. So that currently is... Um, the box we're getting ready to test. So it's working right at the moment um, because I'm recording this after we fixed it. Um, so we can listen to that. And then over here I've got my monitor source. Right now we're listening to the output of that device under test, but I could also just listen to the iPod or anything else there. Um, I've also got the ability to change my metering. Right now it's set to uh, 0 VU to plus 4. I can change that and make that variable if I want to be any particular level other than that, just to make the meters read really easily. <clears throat> um, below that I've got um, a power conditioner, all the power from my test equipment and whatever I am testing comes from there. Gives me a nice stable voltage and protects it from uh, high voltage damage through storms and things like that. Above that, I got a power strip on the back that just plugs into a bunch of stuff. The front two outlets, though, here, um, come from this switch. So whatever I'm testing, I plug in here, and then instead of plugging in and plugging it, I can just turn it off right there. That works really well. Make sure I'm safe. It's right where I need it to be. I don't have to do a whole lot. Um, and then uh, oscilloscope that we'll be looking at in the video. There's the oscillators talked about. It. Additional multimeter bench type. And then this is a two channel mic preamp with some EQ and line level input as well. Um, and that is just right. Really most of the time just taking the, the iPod and sending it up to line level and uh, giving a balanced output. It's also got a couple mic preamps with phantom power on them if I want to test the microphone. I've got uh, a Vox amplifier that uses a new tube, a really tiny vacuum tube. Sounds really good, really tiny for when I'm testing guitar pedals and things like that. Uh, I've got a speaker for it up here out of the way. Soldering, desoldering station, hand tools, 3D printer, CNC machine, laser engraver, um, more stuff, old things to work on. A uh, bunch of parts there. Back over the bench, a whole bunch more parts. And then lots more parts here. Uh, computer, guitars and stuff, books. So that's a quick tour of the shop. 
since I can't be there in class for you, I thought I'd try and do something that I wouldn't be able to do in class. So not only talking about the troubleshooting process, but I want to go through it with you on a piece of equipment. So I picked something that's going to be pretty simple to troubleshoot, pretty straightforward. Um, this is the prototype for the AES build for this year. So there are some weird things on it. Like here you can see a little uh, lead that's been soldered on. There's a weird capacitor on the other side, we'll see. Um, and it was functioning, uh, and I made it stop functioning. So uh, I did fake this problem, but uh, I wanted to show you the process and how we go about testing and what we're looking for. So this is a preamplifier a compressor. Uh, so we got gain control here. So this is the top of the unit. And it would sit in a case like this. The lighting's kind of weird for this. So that's what the case would look like. Let's take it off. So these are user controls on this side. And then the other side of the circuit board has pretty much all the components. <clears throat> and that's a pretty common way to build um, guitar pedals and other things of this sort. That way as we're troubleshooting, we can just open up the back and we'll see all the components that we'll see on the other side. So um, we have gain control here for the mic preamplifier, output level control. Here's attack time for the compressor, release time for the compressor. This control is for the amount of compression. So it's not really threshold or ratio. It's it would sometimes be called either of the two and compressors that are calling it the wrong thing. Um, but it's a lot like what peak reduction control would do in an LA2A. And then over here is a sidechain filter. Uh, it's on when it's down, up off when it's up. Uh, it'll be opposite that uh, on the build. And then this in the final build will be phantom power switch. Right now it's compression on or off, which we don't really need because we can turn it off just by turning this compression control down all the way. So that's the unit. And right now we're not getting any signal out of it. So I've got it connected to my test setup in here in my workstation at home. So I'm going to use my iPhone. I have the two cameras, but I don't have a good way to show you my test setup. So I'm just going to take some iPhone videos to go along with this. So we've got signal going in now. Still nothing coming out. My next step would be typically to look visually and see if there's anything going on. Because this is a prototype, there's a lot of weird stuff on it. So uh, we can take a look if you want, but let's, we're going to go ahead and skip that step for now. The first thing I would do is look around for anything that's missing, anything that looks bad, and we'll look at bad capacitors and transistors and ICs, things like that, next week. I'll give you some examples of them to pass around class and look at. Um, if this is something I just built, like your projects, and I'd be looking for solders not completed, components missing, anything like that. So we can turn it over and spin it around so it's upright. There we go. So we look around, and <clears throat> like I said, it is a prototype, so there's some weird stuff going on. But... Uh, like there's this extra capacitor added in here. Here I had to change the circuit a little bit, so that's actually a, a lead of a, the chip is pulled out of the socket and soldered to something else. <clears throat> but otherwise, I mean, it looks pretty much good. If you go through, look at all the solders, we've got good solders here. There's not really any issues there. <clears throat> so the next step is typically then, after you've looked at everything, uh, is signal tracing and injecting. We're going to put some signal in and test and see what's happening. We're already doing that. We've got signal going in. We're measuring the output um, through the meters that I showed you earlier and we're listening, and we don't have anything going on there. Um, there's a little bit getting through, but that should be astonishingly loud yet. So there's the tiniest amount of bleed, which is interesting, something to note maybe. But you know, certainly not the amount we would expect to see. Um, but we can take a look and see none of the components are missing. Everything looks pretty reasonable. Again, it's a prototype, so there's extra lead. There's this extra capacitor shoved on. So there's some weird stuff. Um, just a little bit about why this works beyond the controls on the front. The mic preamp is here. Uh, right now it's on an IC op amp. But there's also an option to use a discrete op amp. If you want to switch that out and upgrade it to a discrete op amp, you'd be able to do that in this circuit. So I've got signal going in. So the first thing I want to do is look at my circuit and try and find a midpoint. So here's the block diagram for this. So we've got an XLR coming in to a transformer. 
and that transformer is here on a separate board just because it's the height this XLR needs to be this is an XLR combo jack quarter inch and XLR and the the height the potentiometers on the front need to be from the circuit board are different <clears throat> so this has wires on it right now the actual build will have a, a, a header a fixed header so it'll be more durable a little bit easier to build than this was <clears throat> get that out of the way so Mike the XLR comes into that transformer and then from that the output of that transformer goes to again this is a combo jack so the quarter inch inside of the XLR if we were to look at that has switching connections so when nothing's plugged into the quarter inch the output of that transistor transformer secondary goes to the input of the microphone preamp amplifier if there's something plugged in the quarter inch then that quarter inch goes into the amplifier and this works really well as a di so that instead of um the mic front signal going through the transformer we skip the transformer for the di signal and just go directly into that amplifier so again that tends to work really well and it's pretty inexpensive uh, i don't like it in higher end gear because it means your mic signal is always going through the switching connections on a quarter inch which can be a problem uh, if they get dirty, which they often will, particularly if they're not used a lot. So I don't, I don't like that typically, but we're trying to go pretty low budget on this. So that made sense here. So we go through that preamplifier. And again, that is currently this integrated circuit operational amplifier, but could be a discrete operational amplifier. And then from there, go into the FET compression circuit. So there's the FET, which controls the level, uh, and then an amplifier that comes after that. That amplifier that comes after that is all discrete transistor. Signal comes out of that, goes through the compression level control to the side chain, or through the output level control to the output amplifier and into the output. Um, no balancing on the output because it's just a unbalanced output. Again, to cut cost, uh, that that significantly cut the cost of it. So, that's the basic circuit diagram. So, having a block diagram is great. Having schematic is great. If you don't have both, it's possible to troubleshoot something, but it's a lot harder. So, schematics are definitely helpful. So what I want to do is cut the circuit in half. We've got signal going in. Don't have anything at the output. We know it's not working. So to find a middle point to test this. So we can think of it that there's a transformer, an amplifier, a compression amplifier, output amplifier, sort of being our four sections. Um, or you see, the, think that there are three sections. The, the transformer isn't an active section so whether you decide that's one of four sections or if there are only three uh, i don't think really matters um, but let's go ahead and think of that transformer as a section so that means that we have transformer preamplifier as the first half and then the second half is the compression amplifier and the output amplifier so we want to test between the output of the preamplifier and the compression amplifier so if we go to the schematic and, you know, benefits here that we have all of these things available to us. We don't have to worry about tracking down the schematic or trying to trace the schematic. And if you know how hard it is to trace the schematic, talk to Allie because she's doing that for an independent study project right now. So here we've got the output amplifier, excuse me, the microphone preamplifier. Output of that goes through a capacitor and then through a resistor. So... We're looking at this as a whole sort of sub-circuit. So we could go right on that output after R11. We could go on the output of the IC. I think it's just whichever you want. For me, though, um, getting to that... So if we wanted to test around C13, that's hard to do. And C13 is right um, here. So we have to flip the board over and find that, and it's kind of hard. Um, that resistor would certainly be easier, R11. So right there's R11, the second resistor from the bottom. So that'd be a pretty easy place to test. And it's a 36 ohm resistor, so either side of it, we could test and, and see what's going on pretty easily. We could also test the output pin of the op amp. But to sort of get to the end of the circuit, let's go ahead and go testing on R11. Um, and if I wanted to, I could look and s try and decipher which side of R11 is actually the op amp side. So it's the second from the bottom. So this side goes up to something else. This side isn't connected on here. So that means it's got to be connected. Oh, I was looking the wrong one. So that's this. As you flip it over, top becomes bottom. So, so it's this, these two connections. That's the resistor we're looking at. 
Um, so this goes to that capacitor. So that's the capacitor side. So that's the side we want. So it's this side, the far side, over here by where the XLR would sit. So yes, that is actually the side that we want to measure, this side over here. So if we had a listening device, we could do it with a listening device. I'm going to go ahead and do it with an oscilloscope. So I'm going to switch to um, back to my phone again for some more handheld video. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to sending an oscillator to it. So there we go. I'm sending plus 4 to it. So that's 0 VU, which is plus 4 dBU is what we're going to it. I'm padding it down 50 dB, which is fine because this is a mic preamplifier, so we want to do that. This is now showing me the output of my uh, device under test. So now I want to have um, my oscilloscope leads. So this is my oscilloscope probe. The ground lead from this is really short. <coughs> I don't know if you can see this on any camera, but okay, so it's really short. So I've just added a clip lead so that I can move my everything around. So just a, a lead with alligators on both sides. And then I need to connect that to ground. So the easiest place to find ground that I can get to that's going to stay on really easily is the output connector. So the clip there, that's ground. All right, we got tip, ring, which we're not using here. Uh, this is really just wired as a TS. But TRS jacks, I have a ton of them. I don't have any TS. Um, and this also means that you plug in something, if you plug in a TRS connector going to a balanced output, it's going to short cold to ground. So it unbalances correctly for you. If I just use the TS connector, then ring would be left open and we'd have some noise. So that's my tip, my ring, and my sleeve. So sleeve is ground, so that's where that's connected to. And that means now I can use this scope probe to probe around and find my signal. So again, I want to be here. So I'll go ahead and I'll leave this. I took the end off, but I think I'll be better off with it on. Um, so this is my little lead for the oscilloscope. So if I go down here, there's a chance I'm going to short those two resistors together, which might be a problem, might not. It's very possible that that could be power, and I could have just shorted up and blown a whole bunch of things up. So you have to be careful doing that. I know that's just audio, and if I'm careful, I'm not going to touch anything else. So now that's connected to R11. And then I'll go to my oscilloscope, and we can see that we have that signal. So at the output of the, the microphone preamplifier, we do have signal. And I'll go ahead and switch it over here to drums again. And that's always worth doing to make sure you're not seeing something else, but you're actually seeing what you're sending into it. Okay, so that's good. So that means that works. So I know then that everything up to the output of the microphone preamp is working. So I can get rid of that half of the circuit in my mind, and I'm just going to look now at the second half of the circuit. So that means the compression amplifier and the output amplifier, plus the level control in between the two, are all I care about. I don't really care about sidechain right now because I know I'm going to get any output. So whether it's compressing or not, I don't really care. Now, I do want to note something that would be a shortcut for me at this point. Take this off. So if we look at the working unit, flip out the other side. It's upside down now, but this is easier. So I'm going to oscillate. I'll go back to drums. This meter shows me amount of compression. If I turn the compression up, that shows me that's... If all the LEDs are lit up, it's lots of compression. Less LEDs is less compression. So that tells me that the signal is getting to this compression potentiometer, which feeds the side chain, which is feeding the FET and making compression happen. So I know the signal is getting to this potentiometer. So I know actually, without testing anything else, that I'm getting signal at the output of the compression amplifier because it comes out of the compression amplifier and then it goes to the side chain. So I wouldn't really have to do this test, but I'm going to go ahead. So that would be a way, um, sort of an easy way to say, oh, 
this is somewhat like an audio meter. And there are certainly equipment that has audio meters. The Hardys have meters on them. If you have a solo uh, on a console, that tells you that there's signal at that part of the console chain. So anything like this you can do that saves you from poking around and measuring things is definitely worth doing. So this tells me that I know up to where it goes into the output level control, we have signal. But let's go ahead and make sure of that in another way. If we didn't have that meter, how would we test that? So if we go and look at the uh, schematic again, we'll go to the compression amplifier. So we know that we've got signal here at the output of the compression amplifier. So, um, well, I should say, we just we know that from the meter on the front, but we haven't tested that for certain yet. Um, but that's where we want to test between the, this output of the compression amplifier and this input area to the side to uh, the output in the side chain. So we could test that the output of that first section or the input here, whichever we wanted to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and so this is what we're testing. So we could go to the clockwise lug of the output control or to C5. So I'm going to go, go to C5. Um, there are two sides to, T, to C5, and this is C5 right here. So I could go to either side of it. Let me zoom in a bit for you. Not that much. Focus. you back in view. There we go. So the two sides of C5 right here. Again, I could go trace and see which one is uh, it's coming into and which side is going out to. But maybe that doesn't matter. Um, so I'll go ahead and go back to looking at my oscilloscope and I'll go ahead and touch one of the sides, and then we got signal. Notice what it did though. So it showed up high for a little bit and then moved down, which means there's some DC on it there, the other side. So I've got signal on both sides. Now, since this is a capacitor, maybe if I was sending a little frequency, I would see a level difference between the two, but I've got signal there. So that's probably okay. I know there's signal there, so that likely tells me it's coming out of the compression amplifier. Um, and certainly we know that it's getting to the side chain, so that's helpful. So I'm going to say that I think we've got signal there. So that means the section, the only thing left is the output. Uh, so if we look at the schematic, we've got the output level control, the operation amplifier, capacitor, and then the output jack. So cut that in half again, and that's, we're just going to keep doing that same thing. We know signal's getting to here. We just don't know where in here it stops. So I'm going to cut it in half again. I'm going to say the output of the operational amplifier is halfway. You could choose something different, certainly, but that's what I'm going to choose. So that's U2, which is this op amp right here. And we want pin 7. So this dot here indicates pin one, so that's pin one, two, three, four. And on the other side, we've got five, six, and seven. Now, and if you notice the end to my oscilloscope, there's some length to that. And I have a different uh, piece I can put on the tip that covers most of that. But this is the way you typically use them. So if you take this off, because you want to probe around, you get that. As I'm touching here, there's the, op the possibility of me bridging two of these together. And some of these can carry voltage. And so if you connect the voltage output to, oh, I moved my camera in front of my face, but you don't care. Um, if you bridge some of those together, you could blow up your op amp, um, assuming it's working right now. And we don't really know that for sure. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here's seven. So I'll connect to that. And that's what we get. I'll go back to C2. That's a C2. That's a pin 7, which is the output of the op amp. So nothing at the output of the op amp. <clears throat> so that's telling us something, right? So I know that the problem is most likely before this. I mean, there could be problems afterwards, but it's certainly not getting to the output of the op amp. So I've got the op amp could be a problem, or 
the potentiometer. That's really all there is there. I mean, there's the assorted components that connect to the op amp. So it could be some of those. But so likely I would, I would either test at the input of the op amp or this potentiometer. So if we think of the op amp being one of the points, the potentiometer being the other point, between the two is going to be this connection here. So that's pin five of the op amp. One, two, three, four, five. So pin five of the op amp looks like this. So we're seeing nothing there. So nothing at the output of the op amp. So that means then we would want to test that potential output potentiometer, which is down here. Zoom back out. Oh, no, out, not in. Get your camera back out of my face. Because I know you want to see me. So there we go. There we go. So there's the op amp we just tested. And then here's the output level control. So you might notice this lead to that uh, potentiometer is not soldered. Yes, I desoldered it to make this problem, but it, it allowed us to show go through this process and trace through. So this is this is the clockwise lug, so that's connecting into the potentiometer, and then this is the counterclockwise lug, so that's connected to ground, and then this goes out of the potentiometer to the rest of my circuit. So just to test it, I'll go ahead and connect to that clockwise lug, and there we've got signal there. And the other thing that's happening is as I connect that lead, I start getting output. Because it's bridging the potentiometer lead and the, the um, PCB. So I'm going to turn it off. And <clears throat> solder that. I didn't have my soldering iron on, so we'll give it a minute to, to warm up. But that's the process. Um, put signal in, find a halfway point, test it. If you've got it there, you know it's at the second half of the circuit is a problem. If you don't have it there, then you know there is a problem in the first half of the circuit. You don't necessarily know the second half is okay, but you know the first half of the circuit is at least okay. So this is powered off. And then I'm just gonna solder this. And then turn it back on, go back to drums, turn this back around, let me zoom out for you. So we see that's our output meter, and if I adjust my output, it goes away, and we can listen. So that's the sidechain filter off. Sidechain filter on, so we get more low end because the low end is filtered out of the sidechain, so it's not compressing, not compressing the low end as much. Release time is at its fastest right now. I'll go slower. That's a really slow release time, so it's continuing to compress, so we don't get the, the in-between sounds coming up as much. If I make it faster, we'll hear those in-between sounds fill in between the drum hits. We've got attack time over here. Right now it's pretty slow, like we want it to be. If I go faster, we'll lose our transients.
I hope this was helpful. So um, that's our troubleshooting process and a little details on how to test and where to test. Um, again, this fact that this uh, gain reduction meter is working tells me a lot about where signal is getting uh, in the circuit. So it, there's a lot of testing I wouldn't have to do in this case just by seeing this and knowing how the circuit works. Um, <clears throat> so uh, next week I'll have some blown up components to show you. Uh, this weekend there are a couple of videos for you to watch of troubleshooting. They were uh, created while I was being hired to do some repairs. So they're sort of guerrilla iPhone videos with iPhone audio, um, trying to sh shoot a little bit of it as I was repairing and charging somebody for my time. I did ask them ahead of time and they were okay with it. Um, and I took a little bit of time off to make sure I wasn't charging them for what I was doing. But it's real world, hey, I was hired to do this. Here's the problem. And uh, I think there are a couple interesting problems you can look at. Uh, they are uh, on a Trident ADB console, and we'll be looking at that console a number of times because uh, it's somewhere I work a lot during repairs. So I hope you have a good weekend. Um, appreciate letting me skip out on class for today. Uh, I'm going up to Comic-Con. So take care. I'll talk to you on Monday.